we believe that this message will be a blessing to you so I want you to stay glued and watch to the end and share to bless others this is Christocentric we have a lot of Apostle Eric Nyamiche's message on our platform kindly check them out thank you for watching stay blessed yeah, so we are together again now we need to be a people who are a blessing to the congregation because you are supposed to be a blessing to the congregation he gave gifts to men so he gave some to be apostles pastors evangelists teachers prophets now you fall in the category so you are a blessing to humanity so humanity should see a lot of value so far as you are concerned they should benefit from you so the benefits should be physical spiritual mental and whatever it should be somebody who goes to a district and try to develop them if you see that they are not working if you see these young people always falling into pregnancy they are teenagers and they are not developing they are not going to school it is your duty to lift them up so you are not just going to do spiritual exercise you must be interested in their physical development the social development you must be interested in all that you together with your wife sometimes you organize the girls teach them about some little work teach them how to prepare so below and these things and then teach them how to sell and how they can make their ends meet so that they will not go about following men and falling pregnant teach them about how to stay chaste and how to stay and wait for your husband to come and marry you just don't be interested in suspending them left right center you don't you don't you don't help the system i'm not saying don't suspend you suspend any open sin and any evil you have to deal with it but uh, let's develop them let us see that they grow spiritually they grow materially see john prayed for gales he says that i wish above all things that you will prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers he couldn't say that prosper be in health your soul prosper because he is not god so he says that i'm praying for you that in all things you will prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers now people have felt needs so there is no need to be telling people don't go to prayer center don't go to prayer camps if you want to stop that create an alternative now create an alternative if you don't want them to go following other elders and go to so my prayer centers and have their face stuck in certain people then you create an alternative yeah create an alternative why am i saying this that create an alternative when i got to Ophodia, i realized that they have almost sold the church i was surprised what i saw i thought that we were in the north and other people are working down south i thought that as for south there's no much to be done not knowing that there's plenty to be done we got to Kofodia and the elders have shared the assemblies almost all of them are like prayer camp guys they go to Accra go and help other prayer centers or districts invite them and that is what they do for a living for some of them that was their business and in a weekday some are meeting on the field particular day there is this particular elder who is a member of a, a local assembly every monday he will lead the prayer and then the offering that comes out they share it into three parts one is for the local church one is for him and then one is for his helpers that is the people who i don't know how they have been helping him so in effect it is two to one but when we, we even went into the records, the church was not getting anything. And then, so every Monday, it is his prayer, the offering goes to him. Or let me say to Tess, because that, is their, that was the arrangement. And then every Friday, he holds an all-night prayer meeting. He pitches a tent by a local assembly. 
and then they worship in the tent. With the excuse that uh, the, the, the assembly, the church building is too small. So these people will come to church hurriedly because 9 o'clock, the elder is going to hold his all night. So with time, people were not coming to church on Fridays in that particular assembly because they are resting just to come for his all night. And that one to the offering is to test for him. That was good business. Now, if you're a member of the church and you pray in the church and the offering to test come to you, then you, are, you should be rich. And this thing was tantalizing to, to the young people. So most of them were just praying everywhere. I decided that this thing cannot go on. And so I organized a presbytery meeting and I started teaching. Then I made an illustration that let's say your father leaves you with a cocoa farm. And then you see Mr. Toast grow on the cocoa farm. Anytime that you see this in Crampine growing and they are growing big, you will see that the cocoa, which is a property that has been bequeathed to you, the cocoa tree will be dying. But the mistletoe will be growing bigger because it is a parasite. It is feeding on it. And so I asked them, what do you have to do if you want to preserve the cocoa tree? And they said, cut it. And I said, okay. From today, all this prayer meeting, I cut them. And the place, nobody said, amen. Nobody said, amen. Not knowing that they were afraid. They were afraid. When we closed, the pastors were looking at my face. One of them said, hey, possible. Hey, dear. So what? So these people. Those days, when they had Easter conventions, they would fix these people at the prayer sessions. The pastor would preach, and these so-called prayer warriors, and this will be fixed at the prayer session. There was a day that this pastor preached uh, here, and then he continued with prayer. And then this one who was supposed to have led the prayer uh, meeting got angry. So when they finished, he attacked the pastor. Because that was an opportunity that the pastor has effectively destroyed. Because a preacher, you are telling him, a boy empire. So it's like, people, what do you know? When he comes to prayer, leave it with us. So when he comes, he tells some testimonies. That when I went to this place, when I went to this place, when I went to this place, soon, when they came for conventions and, they, and it was not time for them to lead the prayer meeting, you see them standing at the corners, just chatting. Because they are champions, they don't need what is going on. People are consulting them. They are moving and then directing people to themselves. So I cut it. The whole place was quiet. And on that day, I announced that we were going to start a prayer meeting in a month's time. We were going to start on the 31st of October. I remember that date. Then, we have to sustain it. And then make sure that what they are looking for, they get it. So I decided that this prayer meeting should be started and it must be sustained. So we started fasting and praying for the day. And on that day, normally at prayer meetings, you don't preach long. Now, I guess time, the clock, I'll preach 15 minutes, longest 20 minutes. And then we start the prayer. I don't finish preaching and then ask any elder or any pastor to come and lead. I finish preaching and I lead the prayer myself. I did that consistently. Now, the first day, the whole place was flooded. They have not seen such a crowd before. Because when the area had calls for a meeting, they will not pitch up. So why, where from all these people? There was this elder standing in the crowd. When we closed, and people were saying that, hey, where from all these people? Then the elder said, Oh, so we have any starting. And my caretaker overheard him, an elder. 
and he overheard him. So he didn't tell me that this is what has been said. But after about two years, and then he told me. Because he was also observing whether this thing is going to stand the test of time. After two years, and he told me. But see, when you start a prayer meeting, you must sustain it. Now, I had a prayer team that prayed one hour to time. Now, it was, I formed, used the pastors and some of the elders. And so there was this chair that was close to the main tabernacle, uh, the main Kofodia Central Tabernacle. And then from 4.30, they would start the prayer. And then the prayer meeting would start at 5.30 p.m. to about, I think, 8 o'clock. And so they would pray for one hour. Soon, that prayer meeting was almost becoming a church. You get there and the number of people are praying because Kofodia people know how to pray already. They know the church. But now things were going the way they don't think that it should go. But nobody was bold enough to stand against what was going on. And then I also had a prayer team that prayed in my house three hours every Sunday evening. We will start at 8 and we will end at 11. Every Sunday evening. And the prayer meeting was on Mondays. I fixed Mondays because I thought that if I had even gone on trek, by Monday I would have come back. And so I wanted the day that I would be available. When I was at PRWC Atomic, our prayer meetings was on Thursdays. And I never left that meeting for anybody to manage the whole of the three years. I was present, whether preaching or not preaching. The only times that I thought I was not there was maybe when I was sick. Otherwise, I was there. And then one day, Apostle Achu also invited me to Tema. And I refused all invitations that would take me out of the prayer meeting on Thursdays. As for Thursday, I don't go anywhere. I wouldn't want my people to leave Accra Central and then navigate their way to Atomic only to come and find that the pastor himself is not there. No, so I was there all the time. All the time. Whether I'm preaching or leading the prayer meeting, I was there all the time. So let's go back to Kofodia. But for Atomic, I will go to Legon Gardens in the morning around 9, 10. And then I will leave the gardens around 3.30. Come home, take my bath, and go and start the meeting at 5.30. At Kofodia, Oh, there was a small church building, they call it Shakina. Those of you who know Kofodia, just close to the area mission house. So, just a walking distance, I'll put uh, this bag that I used to hang around me, just in my chalote and my t shirt, and I'm gone. Nobody will be there from 9 o'clock in the morning. I will leave there at 4. Come and take my bath. A pastor will come and pick me, and then off we go. So I'll try to go 30 minutes before time so I can join the prayer meeting. Just to encourage that prayer meeting to go on because one pastor is also in charge of the prayer meeting. Now, so we were doing something behind the scenes to sustain the prayer. To sustain the prayer. But why is it necessary? Why is it necessary? The one we follow was a preacher. He was a teacher. He was a caster of demons. He was the healer of the sick. He, he was a miracle worker. Can you imagine this woman going to bury the son? The small boy from Nain. And then the road they were taking to the, to the cemetery, luckily for them, there was life coming from the other end. There was no way Death will meet life and then death will not come back to life. Now, that was who he was and that is how we should become. So, we want you to be people who want to set prayer fires all over and then make sure that people come and their needs are met. Even those of us here, we have needs. Look at how frustrating it is when you are a young lady you have married for about five years and you are not having issue. 
Look at how frustrating it is. Even when you are suffering, mommy, sometimes you, you see that you suffer. What about the member? So if you tell this member, don't go anywhere. Meanwhile, you are not organizing prayer meeting. They will find a way of defiling your instructions. Because they will go. When we were boys, I was in a school in Tamale. And then they told us that one of our prayer team ladies was sick. She was so sick that um, the parents carried her to a shrine. Now, she was so sick. She has done all that she, she can. She was going to the hospital and all that, but she was not getting better. Like the woman who had an issue of blood. And so, somehow, in her sickness and in her weakness, they carried her. Because they also want to save her life. And they did what they knew. And she was so helpless to resist. Because she was also sick and very weak. And they carried her to the shrine. So I was told that our sister is at a certain shrine. So what, what happened? They told me how she's badly ill and all that. And I said, okay. We have to go and carry her away from them. They said, how are we going to do it? Because their mother will not allow to go and steal her. How can you imagine? I, we orchestrated the plan. And then by the time they said, Jack, we have stolen her from the camp. I was far away in Tamale. And I organized this, my boys. They carried her. Now, having carried her, if she dies, it's our responsibility. So come and see this voice. She will not die. We are doing it at a risk. She never died. She never died. So if you are stopping this, all these prayer centers, don't go there. No more prayer camp. Then you and I should create an alternative fire. Because people have needs. When you go into 1 Samuel chapter 1, 1 Samuel chapter 1. I know you know the story of Hannah. Now, she was so much in anguish. And then she went to prayer. I don't know what prayer she prayed, but she went to pray. And then the old priest thought that she was drunk. And then when he was accusing her of being drunk, she heard it. And then she broke to the prayer and tried to answer this old priest that don't take me for one of these women. I am full of pain. There's so much on my heart. So I've come to pray myself. Like you say, if you don't have any prayer meeting for us and I've come to pray, you're also accusing me of being drunk. Now, and listen. Eli answered, that is verse 17 of chapter 1, verse Samuel. Go in peace, and may the God of Israel grant you what you have asked of him. This is the priest. These are words from the mouth of the priest. Go in peace, and may the God of Israel grant you what you have asked of him. Now, these words enter the ear of the parishioner, Hannah. She said, May your servant find favor in your eyes. Then she went her way and ate something. And her face was no longer downcast. Now, she heard the words from the priest and she grabbed it. She heard the word from the priest and she grabbed it. You don't have any idea how the people see us. They don't want anything from any other person. They know you have it. But sometimes, it's like a dog. When you are eating and you have a normal dog that you don't usually feed, the dog will come and lie down there. And then, if you take the fufu and you are taking it to your mouth, it will go like this. When it goes to your mouth, it will go like that. And then, when your hand gets into the soup, it will go that way. It will be doing that, hoping that you will give it something to eat. If you don't, I've never seen any dog who will back and say, oh, 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 you didn't give me. They will not do that. You see that the dog will go quietly. It 
shouldn't be like that. That people will come to the father's table and they will go back still hungry. When you are there, this should not happen. You shouldn't say that I am a teacher, but who should pray? But Jesus prayed. He taught. He preached. So if he is our leader, then you don't have to just be a left-footed. You have to play left and right. Pray and teach. Pray and preach. Pray and heal the sick. After the Holy Ghost, that does the healing is in you. No. It does the healing is in you. Crowds follow Jesus. When you read Mark 5, he had healed someone. He has cast out 2,000 demons from someone. And then, verse 21, crowds followed him. And then came out this man who said, my daughter is dying. Later on, they said, your daughter is dead. Then, this woman with the issue of blood, they were amongst the crowd. And I'm sure amongst the crowd were people with pains in their leg, pains in their waist, blind men, people with some challenges in their mind. People have needs. And they are looking up to us for supply. What God wants us to do for them is to gather the people for him. That is why the Bible says, gather my people for me. You gather them and I will come and do what you cannot do. But you do the gathering. And if you want to have a sustained prayer in your district or in your area, you must work at it. I just gave you the examples of what I used to do when I was an area head and a district pastor. Not to show you of who, how powerful I am, but because I want you to try it. I want you to try it. There was no day on a Monday that I would take anything. Mostly, I would just come home and then drink something, go, preach, and come back. By the time sometimes you come back, you can not eat. It's all because of the needs of the people. People have needs. So you are a pastor not only to go and teach so that you look for sermons from any place and then you preach, preach, and you are gone. No, no. After preaching, heal the sick, raise the dead. Freely you have received and freely give. Freely give. And so this evening, I don't want us to come shouting the usual way, but I want you to get into the ministry. Get into the ministry. You see, the disciples saw a great difference between themselves and Jesus. They saw it, but they didn't know where it was coming from. That is why sometimes they will ask him, what manner of man is this? That even the wind obeys him. Because they don't think that wind should obey human beings. And they know that he's a carpenter's son. Can, can you see this man that you just ate with? See him walking on water. Do human beings walk on water? He was mesmerizing them. They were always wondering what, what kind of a man. So one day when he said, I came from the father and entered the world, they said, ah, and then they were kind of crazy. Because we always thought that, yeah, you are not part of us. But beyond that, let's go to Luke chapter 11. One day Jesus was praying in a certain place a certain place. When he finished, one of the disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. Just as John taught his disciple. Lord, teach us to pray. We don't know how to pray. Teach us to pray. Because they saw that there was something about his prayer life. Because you know where he, he used to sleep? One day somebody said, Master, where, where is your house? He said, forces have bows, bears have nets, but the son of man has no place to lay his head. Let's go to Luke chapter 21. Luke 21. Get into the last part. Uh, 37, 38. 37, 38. Let's read together. Each day. Now, the word is what? Each. He wouldn't say every, so that you may think that uh, it is not about one day, 
the next day, the next day. But he said, each day, Jesus was teaching at the temple and each evening, he went out to spend the night on the hill called Mount Olives. The next verse. And all the people came early in the morning to hear him at the temple. Can you imagine that? Each day you find him teaching. And in the evening, where was he sleeping? On a mountain called Olives. And early in the morning, people will come and hear him teach. Hear him teach. One day he said to Peter, Satan wanted to destroy, but I've prayed for you. Then Peter said, me. Me. Then Jesus began to talk about it. He said, if anybody will leave you, me, I will not. So they went for a prayer meeting. As Jesus was praying, you go and visit good old Peter. One who was bluffing. See, Christianity is not a matter of words, but of power. Yeah. The man was sleeping. He said, Peter, Peter. He said, eh, eh, eh. said, wake up. And Peter will go back to sleep. Three times and he left him. Now, when Judas led the enemies to the garden of Gethsemane, and then Peter lifted the head, and he saw them. I don't know whether he was seeing some hallucinations or something. He just caught somebody's ears. Then Jesus fixed the ear back. Peter's strength was gone. So when they arrested him, the Bible said he followed him afar off. He loved him. But he was following afar off because he doesn't have the energy to stand against the trials. Somehow, he was found at the court. And this small girl said, I saw you. I saw you. He said, me, your key is betraying you. <laughs> your language is betraying you. me. By the time he said the third one, go, go, go. and then his eyes met Jesus' eyes. And even that, instead of going to him, ran away. What he lacked was strength. Luke 6, verse 12. One of those days, Jesus went out to a mountainside to pray and spend the night praying to God. I want to challenge you that begin to see how many hours you pray and you can pray continuously. How many hours you pray and you can pray continuously. Begin to go practice it. My Baba recently came to me. He said, now I've broken through. I said, what? It was Barbara in my head. Now ask for six hours a cocoa cry. The other time I did 12 hours, but six hours, six years, a cocoa. Said that I may buy house in Pai Bodhi, and then Tientium, my final. He used to go to the field to go and pray. Then I was telling him that I cry, it can be quite dangerous walking in the middle of the night like that. So you, if you have a good place, just find somewhere in your room. And so, so where, where did you pray? Say in my room. Ask for six hours. I say, Matrao. So to him, this is a Baba. If a Baba is praying two hours and a pastor, you see, some of you, not all of you, especially those who didn't come to this meeting. <laughs> you see, they don't even know when they said the Amen. They, they knew that they went to pray, but they, they only found out that it was morning. Yeah. They didn't know when they said Amen. They slept in the prayer. Especially the woman. Some of you, the devil does not even care about your presence. But I want to provoke you so that they write your name. They have to write you and they have to know you. They have to know you. Jesus I know. Paul I know. Who are you? So let them write your name from tonight. You see, this work that you are doing, soon you'll be an old man. I promise you. I promise you. Soon you'll be retired. And the best they can do for you is to let you be praying, closing prayer. 
bubble closing prayers. Uh, <laughs> if not benediction. But whilst you have this opportunity, somebody here life and some any a dynasty, any sicape. One day you stand before the Lord, but there will be nothing to show. Because no life flowed out of you. No life. The measure of the value of our ministry is how much life flowed out of you. Not the things you got. Shall we rise? And then let us pray that God move us into this ministry tonight. Move us. Move us. Don't say we pray. This one, move us. Until your prayer ministry draw people from the surrounding towns and villages. And then I want you to be inviting one another to your, your districts. Go and help them. Let us go and help those who have needs. And when we join this church, we never set a prayer meeting purposely for healing. No. We went to church. We preached any preaching. Mostly our preachings was on holiness and the second coming of Christ. That is Pentecost for you. Holiness, baptism of the Spirit, the second coming of Christ. When we have done all this, yes, it will be mayor or GM Bible. Yeah. Then somebody comes for the prayer of deliverance. And so we did all that. You can decide that this prayer meeting is for this. You are meeting the needs of the people. The spiritual needs and all that. Fine, no problem. But you should be somebody from whom life can flow to the people. Because Jesus said, out of your innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. So, find out whether it is flowing. If it is not flowing, it is there. So, it must flow. Shall we begin to pray? Yes, open your mouth. Open your mouth.